All right. In this video, we are going to put in a Siemens S120 drive into a TIA Portal project. We are using version 16 of TIA Portal. And let's just jump right into it. I've already inserted a PLC into this project. So the next thing we're going to do is click on Add New Device. I'm going to go down to Drives. It's an Amex S120. And we're going to use the CU320 control unit. The Profinet version is the only option we have inside Portal. And that immediately brings up the device configuration screen or device view. And it just has the control unit. So the next thing we're going to need is a line module. We're going to put in a smart line module, just drag and drop. Next, we're going to use a motor module. For today, we're going to use one single motor module and a double motor module. So drag one of each into our project. OK. Next, we need to define the motors. And what we're going to do is for the single motor module, we're going to use a big 1PH8 motor. These are induction motors purpose built for motion control if you've never used one. And they start off pretty large. Okay, we'll look at some of the frame sizes and specs in a second. But then for the double motor module, we're also going to go with we're going to go with a Siemens 1FK7 servo motor. Okay, and I just want to point out that you see up here we do have the drive click motor um, option available. If you're going to connect up to your hardware, um, you can just drap, uh, drag and drop this drive click motor onto your motor modules. And once you connect up to the hardware, it, CU is going to re reach out and read everything over drive click and find all the nameplate data of that motor. And you don't have to go through and pick the details out. Um, we're not going to do that today because I don't have hardware to connect to. So I'm going to manually pick a 1FK7 motor, even though it will be a drive click 1FK7 motor. You could do it either way. OK, there we go. So now we have pretty much all of our hardware in here. It's just not defined. You can see there's a sort of a white body on all these components as opposed to the control unit, which is this dark gray. It shows that it's populated um, or defined. Okay, so we'll click on the infeed module, the smart line module, and we're going to scroll down here to select which version we have. We're going to go with the book size 16 kilowatt. All right. And for the single motor module. Again, we're going to scroll down here. There we go. And this is going to be our pretty big motor, 30 amp um, motor module, also rated 16 kilowatts. And here in our double motor module, just one of the little guys. Oh, little selection, there we go. All right. I have to click on just one of those gray boxes there. And then a little, let me choose the three amp double motor module. And now you can see that both of those are defined. Now let's go through and define our motors. So first let's do our 1PH8 motor. And I'm just going to use the smallest one. This is a shaft height 80 millimeter. So that's a you know basically a 150 millimeter frame motor. 
and we're going to pick the one with this um, sine cosine high resolution encoder here. Okay. And then for our 1FK7 motors, in this case, I'm going to use this filter here to get close to what I want, 1FK7032. And you can see all these different filters. I could add more. We'll go 6,000 RPM. There we go. And I'm going to use the absolute multi turn plane shaft without holding brake. Okay, so click the radio button and select that. Like I said, if you are able to connect up to the hardware to let drive click basically do the work for you um, it always makes things easier prevents you from typing in a wrong number or anything like that okay go down let's see which encoder do I want the absolute multi-turn Clean shaft without holding brake. There we go. Okay, so you can see all these blue lines. They've auto generated drive click topology for us. Keep in mind that when you do install the hardware, follow that drive click topology as shown here. If you don't, then you'll just have to delete some of these and reroute them to match your actual real-world topology. And there's pretty much only one thing we're missing that isn't defined, I would say, and that is, what are we talking to? We're going to talk to this PLC here, so you can drag and drop if you like, or left-click on this and select the PLC and Profinet interface of your choice. And I always like to compile on my PLC just to make sure there's no errors. There we go. Everything's happy. And that is a basic setup of putting in a S120 servo axis or servo control unit in this case and drive axes into a TIA portal project. We'll do a couple more videos going into uh, some of the common pitfalls as well as uh, using the technology object control scheme along with these drives here. All right. And I'll see you next video.